Hello! Today I'll be explaining how to use Unity to make recolorable materials. The three cats on the screen now have the same pattern but different colors selected to make them look like different breeds. The source code for this project is posted on my GitHub with a link in the description. Feel free to check out the project and try it yourself. A material in Unity uses a shader and properties to define what an object should look like. A shader tells your computer how properties such as images or colors should be drawn on the object. Each of these objects on the screen uses the same shader but different image properties. This is the shader graph view where we program a shader. Shown now is a basic shader with one property of an image texture, one node, sample texture 2D, and an output. Each box on the shader represents a node which has inputs on the left and outputs on the right. The colored lines represent data moving between the nodes. A texture 2D, which is an image, is taken in from the properties. Then the sample texture 2D node draws this image on the object. The small image under a node shows us what the data in that node looks like. The base color on the output node lets us color our material. Now that we have a basic shader down, let's start by adding some color. Here we have three rows of boxes where each box is a solid color. Each row of boxes all use the same material. If we change the material, it will change all the boxes in that row. For example, if we switch the blue material color with a green one, all the boxes in the middle row will turn to green. The shader for this material is quite simple. We just take in a solid color and apply it to our whole object. We can combine what we accomplished in the previous two steps by adding color to a black and white pattern with a shader as shown on screen. If we change the color selected for a box, we will change the white parts from the original pattern. This material uses a slightly more complicated shader that uses an image and color. The image is combined with the color using a multiply node. This replaces white parts of the image of our selected color. This is because each color is just a combination of red, green, and blue values. White has all these values set to 1, while black has all these values set to 0. If we multiply any color by white, we get back the same color. If we multiply any color by black, we get back black. If we multiply a color with gray, we get a dimmer version of that original color. Next, we need to know how to combine images. On the screen, there are two boxes on the top, each of a solid image texture. The three boxes on the bottom are combinations of the two boxes on the top following a pattern. Just like before, the pattern is a black and white image where we replace the black areas with the first image and the white parts of the second. The gray areas are blended between the two images. This shader takes in two images and a pattern as input. Just like before, we recolor the white parts of the pattern with the first image, then we invert the pattern and recolor the originally black parts of the pattern with the other image. Finally, these two images are added together in the add step to make our final material. You might have noticed that there is a step in the process using a power node. We square the colors before adding them, then take the square root of their sum to blend them correctly. If we skip this step, we will have ugly black splotches show up when we blend two different colors together. I've linked a video by Minic Physics in the description that discusses this subject in greater detail. Now that we know how to combine images, we can go to our final step, recoloring a grayscale image with two different colors. The shader for this material is essentially the same as combining image shader, except now we use two solid colors instead of two images. White areas of the pattern are fully replaced with the first color, black areas of the pattern are fully replaced with the second, and gray areas are a smooth blending of the two. We can go back to the black tabby at the start of the video and see how the black fur can be recolored to any combination by selecting different colors. Recoloring is very useful for game development. It can allow for player customization or dynamic environments. In my hexagon game, each layer of hexagons uses the same pattern but different colors and can be faded before a tile is removed from the game. Some other advanced applications of this recolor shader include layering multiple patterns together and are shown in the bonus scene in the project. You can even connect the color to a time node and animate a color changing gradient like the cat on the screen now. Thanks for watching. All the assets for this project are open source and posted on my GitHub at the link in the description. I hope you found this video informative. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or ideas. 
I'll continue to release assets from my open source project as I develop it, so subscribe if you're interested to learn more. I'll hopefully be making a video about pathfinding and another about physics soon. Have a great day!